doing? John and Mike from the brew-dudes.com homebrewing blog. Also our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching so far. Another piece of equipment from our friends at x uh, Instruments, also uh, from FLIR Systems. That's F-L-I-R Systems. Uh, they live at xtech.com. I guess that's a parent company. I'm not really sure. But this is a P pH meter. It's a pocket pH meter. And uh, I'm pretty excited to use this. Uh, I know that um, measuring pH, yeah, if you had a pocket, had a pocket, you could put it in there. I know that measuring pH during the brewing process is important. I know, especially during the mash, it's been brought up in certain articles I've read. I'm not really sure exactly why, but that's why I have this guy to ask questions. So, first of all, let's talk about why would you need to use a pH meter instrument uh, during your home brew process. I think we can talk specifically about the mash, but are, yeah. are there other times you want to use the pH meter? Sure. And then let's do a little demo because I know you have a sample of something, something here, here and, something, and here. something else here. Okay. And maybe we'll get a different reading okay. from your two samples. So, mash. Go. Why um, do you need to check the pH of your mash? Well, the short answer without being too complicated is That's that... That's how I like it is you want to be between 5.2 and 5.4, pH of 5.2 and 5.4, maybe even up to 5.6. That's the sweet spot for most of your starch conversion enzymes. So we just simply leave it at that, is that you know, you're, you're shooting for like a 5.2, 5.4, or you know, in that range. Um, so that's what you want to look for in the mash. And you're driving that with brewing salts or actually adding bases or acids to the mash to get it into that range, okay? So, you know, we can, you know, it's a whole separate concept you know what those salts do for flavor, hops, malt, but basically you need a pH. If you're gonna if you're gonna try to target a mash pH by using a calculator and adding gypsum, I'm sorry. At some point you really should get a pH meter. What's the point of trying to chase pH without a pH meter? I it's don't just know. it's just kind of silly. That's always been my opinion, and we've been doing it. But um, I've as a guy who thinks about pH in his work life, you know, having a pH meter is something that you know. I find incredibly valuable for this. So the mash, I think that should be obvious to everybody why you want that. But how about other parts of your brewing? So um, it is generally believed that if, you're, if you've got the right mash pH, you will have the right wort pH, which will then result in the right post-fermentation pH. I see. And the more acidic something is, the brighter it tastes, mm. right? And the more sort of alive the flavors are. Yeah. And every beer style sort of can benefit from pH being bumped one direction or another. So if you had a stout that you wanted to be slightly fuller, maybe you'd want a slightly higher ma higher pH of the ward. More alkaline. Right, right, more okay. alkaline. Um, and so maybe you have a weird case where your mash pH, or what you need to do to achieve a proper mash pH, doesn't necessarily result in a wort pH that will give you a proper, the beer finish pH that you want to have. Okay. Because yeah. the fermentation process is going to lower the pH a little bit more. Okay. Uh, the boiling process lowers the pH a little bit more. So it's, that's why it's generally believed if you get it straight at the mash, the rest will follow. But what if you want it to be slightly different? Mess around, yeah. If you want it to be different, you're going to need a pH meter to help you. Got it. Right? Because you need that measurement to know where you are. And that could simply and mean how to adjust that could simply there. mean that if you if you wanted to go for a 5-4 mash pH and not a 5-2, but you wanted your pre-boil wort pH to be, you know, 5 instead of 5-2 or something or 5 or 4-9 you would be adding acid in the boil kettle to push it down a little bit more, right? Another great, so, so that's just sort of how you would dictate the final pH of beer, because the pH of beer is important for flavor, just as much as calcium or sulfate or, or it. things like that. Things we played with, yes. Great. Another great th reason why you need a pH meter is something that's super popular right now is doing like kettle souring, mm. or sour beers in general, yeah. right? Yep. You might want to achieve a certain acidity level or at least monitor your city level to say, oh, I think this is sour enough, but how do I know what this flavor is, what this level of acidity on my tongue is in another beer, that I, another sour beer I make? Well, one way to monitor that would be to take a pH measurement of that beer, and then you know, oh, I really like 
sourness that kind of falls off at like 3.0, right, or something. And then, and so the next time you're making a sour beer, if it gets to like 3.2, you know, maybe I want to let that go a little bit longer because yeah. I really like a 3.1. Right. Now, pH and residual acid is slightly different and has big impacts on flavor. We can talk about it in another video. But that's a great place for using a pH meter. Awesome. Really, in, 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 is those sour beers because you're making acid yep. and you want to be able to monitor that acid progress. You know, if you taste a beer and you think it's sour, um, but if you check, the, you've only maybe dropped a few pH points, you know that you got a long way to go. So that's where a pH meter comes in handy for sour beer brewing too. Love it, love it, and that's that's important since sours are on the rise in their popularity. Yeah. Okay, so you have two samples here. Two We're actually samples. gonna try this out. This is the Xtec pH pen. pH pen. pH pen. pen uh, pH. 50 is the uh, product code. So it's, it's as simple as turning on the power, power button. There's a little display. It gives you some numbers. It gives you a whole number and then a decimal, like yep. a tenth of something. Now, this is just distilled water? Just distilled water. Okay. So we should put the old pen into this water. Yeah. And what typically, I mean, what should the reading be? Should it be in the low fives? Is that well, uh, water? Textbook water yes. should be seven. Should be seven. But in the your, middle. But your tap water might be a little bit less than that, it might be a little bit more than that. Depends on your residual alkalinity of the water. So distilled water should be at seven. Pure distilled water should be at seven. But this is a jug of distilled water I've had laying around that's at room temperature. It's been opened, so it's absorbed some atmospheric CO2 and stuff oh, like that. So nice. its pH is likely to be a little bit different. And so this is coming in at about five. Yep. Now we haven't effectively calibrated this pH no. meter yet, but this is reading five, and I could conceivably see, because distilled water has no buffering capability, it's got no salts to help buffer right. it, yep. that as it absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere, it's going to drop in pH wow. a little it's bit. it's going right? to bring it down. Which is something to consider when you're trying to forget your mash pH rate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when when you're looking at distilled water using that as a calculator, and if the calculator says assumes a pH of seven, but you're actually at a pH of five five, your salt your salt additions are going to screw up your pH significantly. <laughs> right. Yes. So the point of this exercise is that this is just distilled water yep. on an uncalibrated pH meter, right. and this is distilled water that I added just two drops of lactic acid to. Yep. And this drops the pH way down below four. We're now, you know, hovering around 3.5. Mm -hmm. uh, now it, it keeps. It's funny thing is it just keeps measuring. Yeah. So I think like so after we calibrate point, this on yeah. this model, the decimal point flashes while it's still in measurement mode. Yes. And usually the decimal point stops or there's something that flashes when it says. I've reached a stable plateau. Now we just sort of took this out of the box. Yeah. It really needs to get a good soak. Yep. Um, to Calibrate. Kind of get it yeah. going. Yeah. The other thing is they sell uh, what's called calibration solutions, usually four, seven, and ten. Yep. That's what um, it says here. Yeah. And so what you would do is you would stick this guy. If you wanted to measure mash pH, yeah. which is at like a uh, like a, a five something. Yeah. You would first go into a pH seven, calibrate, and you want to always do a two point calibration. Then you'd go into a pH 4 standard and measure. Now you've bracketed 4 and 7. Nice. If for some reason you were measuring the alkalinity of something, you'd want to do 7 and 10. Um, so you got 3.1 on that. Uh, there you go. So it's it's fairly acidic. Yeah, and I just I just add a little bit. So yeah. if we added more, it would drive down even more. Yeah, so. yeah. And, that, and that's enough. Enough to yeah. like be a little bit different from the measurement, even though this should have been 7. Yeah. It was more like 5, 6. Yeah. But, you but know, for demonstration yes, purposes, that's all we need to it's do. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, something else you can do with with a pH meter too, yeah. which is fun, and, and we could maybe do this in a future video once we calibrate it, yeah. is we could actually do a titration of like lactic acid or phosphoric acid, and measure the pH in each sample, and then do tastings mm. until you can say, well, what is my pH threshold? Yeah. Like how much of a pH shift can I detect? It's interesting. Like how low does the pH have to get before I start saying? This is acidic. Yeah. Right? Like, I tasted this when we first made it, and there was a very subtle lactic acid ting to it. Really? Because, I mean, that stuff's pretty strong. Yeah. And, but still, you how many did you put just some drops in it? Like, two little drops. And that that's all it took. Huh? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's so, great. By the way, pH meters are cool. Buying a, a bigger pH meter uh, would give you more accuracy, but they're more expensive, and all pH meters require constant um, care and love of the probe. The probe needs to stay wet, it needs to stay in a saturated potassium chloride solution usually, 
Um, and so, you know, if you don't, and if you don't use it regularly, if you're going to buy a pH meter, you need to expect, even if you don't brew every week, you should go downstairs to your brewery and you should do like just calibrator solutions wow. once a week just to keep it happy, hmm. you know, and then make sure you're keeping it in storage solution. Because the, the meter itself is just electronics and it lasts forever, but it's the probe that will give you trouble. And I think, I'm not sure if like on a, on a pen model like this, if like you can replace the probe. So that's one of the reasons why people might default to buying a pH meter yep. with a detachable probe. Right. Because every so often you might have to replace the probe. Yep. This will this will need uh, constant upkeep. Yeah. But uh, you know we're going to get some storage solution and we'll get some calibrator solutions just so that we can start integrating this into some of our future brewing videos. Everybody needs to know a scientist. You know, you need to know a mechanic. <laughs> a mechanic <laughs> and a scientist. I'm sure there's others that a barber. Yeah, a baba. Nice. That's a barber for everybody else. Oh, yeah, everyone lives in the Boston that's area. Right. Yeah. All right, so that's pH meter. Thanks, X Techs. Uh, check them out, xx.com. So uh, um, we're going to use this and, and use it in our brews, uh, hopefully, to improve them for sure. For sure. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.